Today is a birthday and a death day. This is my older brother's birthday. It's also the day that Roger passed away three years ago. And we're making merit for someone else who died today. These two things are connected. Wherever there's birth, there's going to be death. We like the birth. We don't like the death. You can't have the birth without the death. That's why the Buddha said you have to see the danger in birth. Mara once came to see one of the nuns meditating in the forest, and he asked her, well, Why are you afraid of birth? All kinds of good things happen to people who are born. She said, But they also die. Aging, illness, and death would not happen without birth. So you have to ask yourself, what gives rise to birth in the mind? It's a process of becoming. Becoming comes from clinging. Clinging comes from craving. This is why the Buddha focused so much of his teachings on craving, because we tend to think of craving as our friend. After all, it's because of our desires that we can gain things. We didn't have any desires at all. We, didn't, we don't see that we'd have anything at all. And so wherever our desires tell us to go, we go. Now, we do learn to have some restraint. That's part of living in human society. But craving is something that tends to overflow its bounds. Years back when it was one evening <coughs> after the evening chanting at Wadasokara, a couple of monks were sitting on the porch of the sala, and this huge Western man and this tiny, tiny Thai woman came by. And one of the monks looked at them and said, Craving knows no bounds. So you've got to learn how to step back from your cravings and ask yourself, Are they really your friends? What do they know? Craving tends to be blind. It sees something only partially and it says, This is pretty good, let's go for it. And then when you attain it, and you don't like it, where's the craving then? Well, the craving says, go someplace else, go someplace else. It's when you can see that the craving is the big problem. That's when you're really getting on the path. So learn how to divide your cravings into two sorts to begin with. The craving to put an end to suffering, that's a good craving. The other cravings, craving for sensuality, craving for more becoming. A craving to destroy whatever becoming you've already got. Put those on the other side. If you're going to have any friends among the cravings in your mind, choose the ones that want to find true peace or want to find true happiness. Eventually you have to go beyond that friendship too. But in the meantime, as you have these cravings as your friends, you can learn to, as I say in Thailand, put the other ones outside the wall. You don't need to have their friendship any longer, because where has it led you? It's just led you around and around and around. Whereas the craving for true peace, that's what's inclined you to do what is good to begin with. So make that distinction. And be very clear about which cravings you're going to side with. That's how you get on the path.